And while that band, the Guillemots, were playing, and my brother punched my nose in, we woke up covered in blood on the same bed. Welcome, Liz, to the allotment. Thank you for having me. Is it your first time? On an allotment? Yeah. It's not the kind of thing you remember, maybe. I don't know. Oh. Like maybe once in a blue moon I've been in a, an allotment. I don't know. Are you an avid gardener? No, I've got... I, 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 I don't have a garden. Uh, whenever I have had a garden, it's been uh, just kind of rubble and waste, you know? All right. But I didn't mean to put the, the allotment thing down. I like did. you wouldn't remember, but just like kind of an allotment and a garden difficult to differentiate in your mind, you know? Yes. Maybe I've wandered into an allotment at some point, but I thought it was just a garden? Or uh, in my memory, it's just become a garden? First meaningful time on the allotment? This is the first meaning, oh yeah. Uh, how meaningful will it be? Well, let's find out. Yeah, let's dig deep. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, what we're going to be doing today is, uh, first we're going to just dig this over, this little patch, and pull out these roots that you will find. You'll find okay. little white roots. Okay, so Not you, too many. you've invited me up here to, to toil. It would appear so. Wow, it's, wow, so uh, all the way, so Brixton to Walton, the whole of the Victoria line, the entire thing. It's a big line, you know, to, to, to dig in the dirt. Okay, I like that, I like that. I'll give you a choice of fork, the big or small. Well, I mean, I'm gonna have to go for the big one, I think. Okay, in that case, <laughs> I'll sit down and I can do this side. You will stand up and you'll just okay. sort of like... Just sort of mix it up a bit. Yeah, it's pretty intuitive. You put the fork in, you dig, you pull out stuff that looks like it shouldn't be there. Okay, I mean, but how do you, how do you, how do you qualify that? Like a rock? A rock? A rock? Part of a body? A rock should leave. I mean, for instance, like that's not really a rock, is it? That's more of a, what would you say? That's not even a pebble, what's that? Small stone. A small stone. That so can does stay. That, that can stay? That can stay. At what point is it like uh, a problem, you know? Double this size would be a problem. Double that size would yeah. be a problem, so that's fine as well. Yeah. Okay, but that boy over there, that's, <laughs> that's, that's out of water. Yeah. Yeah, get okay, it out. Okay. Yeah, nice, great technique. So I'm just sort of cleansing the mud. <laughs> yes, that's one way of putting it. But stop. Stop, okay. This has got to go. What's that? This is um, a little bit of root of something called ground ivy, which is like my nemesis. And this ah, okay. uh, will just grow and grow and grow and grow. This white bit is alive. So we want to get the white bits out. Anything that looks like alive, not in, a worm. In this bucket say. here, there's some other white stuff in there I see already. You've been... I knew you okay, were I didn't, I didn't know about the ground ivy. Well, you know, you learn something new every day. And so, see, there's quite a lot. So this stuff... What, and you have to go through all of this and get rid of this? It's bullshit. Jesus. Yeah. And what do you get at the end? What's the end goal here? Some apples, some, um, some blueberries. I wish. Butternut squash. Not even that good in oh, my opinion. I'm not into that. Oh, well, that's what we're planting, so. I don't like that. Butternut squash and sweet potato. I have, I take umbrage with both of those vegetables. I take umbrage only with a sweet potato. <sighs> yeah, like sweet potato chips, that kind of. I hate them. It's just like a horrible perversion of chips, you know? A butternut squash, I'm, I'm fine with it because I like it in a risotto. But other than that, it's just really not you know, my type of vegetable. I don't like risotto either. What do you like to eat? I just, any, anything other than risotto and, and butternut squash and, and sweet potato chips, you know? <laughs> other than that, I'm not, um, I'm not fussy, you know? I just think risotto is kind of like textually ambiguous, you know? Oh, that's why I like it, I quite like mush. No, no, I don't mind like a good sauce, like a pasta sauce, but yeah. it's not like, I don't like just a mush, you know? Okay, well, I'm not into that. I won't be sending you any of these squash. So we're only going to plant two plants. Are you an exercise-focused person? I've kind of denigrated my body for my entire adult life. And now um, I'm trying to kind of reclaim, reclaim it a little bit by doing the odd bit of exercise. But it's incredibly tedious, you know? Well, I it's was thinking... It's kind of like a hamster in a wheel or something. But I guess at the end of this, you get, you know, a few vegetables, you know, it's not so abstract as like going running or something. Yeah, but it's a completely pointless activity. I don't know how to describe what I'm trying to say in your example. I don't want to say like reformed rock star, like what, 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 what would you say? 
what I, I'm uh, on the turn, I would, is what I would say. You know, on the turn. What, a slightly more like health conscious rock star, like fewer drugs? But it's a funny time for that kind of carry on, you know? It just feels like gardening is kind of a well trodden path, you know, the like. Like uh, Alex James. That's exactly things. who I'm thinking of. Yeah, Mr. but those Sheen. guys. Those guys were like successful, you know? So they can afford like things like gardens, you know? Right, and cheese factories and shit. And cheese factories and stuff like that. I'm kind of grateful that I don't have to uh, live in a big house here anymore or a squat or a, or a crack house or something, you know? What is the worst place you've ever lived? I guess I lived in a real rat infested squat in uh, Myland or Bow. Somewhere out east, you know, with my little brother mm. years and years ago. We used to share a bed, you know. And we had this horrible altercation one one evening while that band, the Guillemots, were, pl were playing. And my brother punched my nose in, you know. And we woke up covered in blood in the same bed. But there were rats everywhere, you know, like proper rats. It was horrible. I don't feel like Alex James was... I don't think Alex James has been there, you know. No, man. He's not, not lived that life. Not for some time, at least, you know. I, I don't know, there's something particularly odious about Alex James. He is one of the worst, I think. I mean, they all shamed themselves one way or another, didn't they? Yeah. The kind of Britpop set, like, par for the course, I guess. But, I mean, maybe not so much Jarvis, but who else came out of that kind of clean, you know? But Alex James is, uh, I don't know, the whole cheese thing. The cheese thing is sucks. The cheese thing, the kind of like, yeah. I don't know, like Britpop, Damien Hurst, all that stuff, you know, it's all just a bit kind of, I don't know, it hasn't aged well, has it? No, it certainly you know? hasn't. That Damien Hurst thing where he was predating his paintings recently, did you see that? No. Like he was selling spot paintings or whatever. Oh yeah. Or I think it was, maybe it was sheep, you know, in, in the vitrines. He was selling these sheep. He'd made them, he'd made them a few years ago, but he dated them to the 90s to up the price, you know? And this is one thing I can't bend my head around, is just like, why? You're already more wealthy than you can possibly kind of like need to be. Like why risk your, uh, your reputation in such a gruesome kind of way to make like an extra 20 grand on a fucking dead sheep or whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't really make any sense. But then I guess once you're at that level, who is it that you're comparing yourself to, you know? He probably goes for lunch or whatever with like top level fucking investment bankers that brag on about the size of their super yacht or whatever the fuck it is, you know? So it's all like relative, you know? He slightly like rehabilitated himself to me when he popped up in the Ronnie O'Sullivan documentary recently. Have you watched that? I did, yeah, I did. But I mean, it, uh, I know what you mean, I but it wasn't... I love Ronnie, man. I love Ronnie, yeah. I mean, who doesn't love Ronnie, you know? Well... He's kind of wayward and... He loves Damien Hirst. Yeah, but I mean, that doesn't get him, that doesn't get him out of dodge for no, me, you know? No. A bit of love from Ronnie, you know? Ronnie's got his own problems, his own kind of blindness, you know? Yeah, it's amazing, that documentary. Yeah, it looks stressful, doesn't it, the old snooker? Yeah, much snooker more stressful stuff. than I would ever imagine. I hung out with Steve Davis a few times. You ever oh, met yeah? Steve Davis? I have met Steve Davis. I like, I like him, man. He's like a surprising dude, you know? What, with his kraut rock love? Just with his mad fucking, uh, his, yeah, his like, love of like bizarre music, you know? Yeah. And, the, and the sesh, you know? He loves the fucking sesh. Like, he can really cut loose with that, that guy, you know? Snooker players, generally, I've got a lot of time for them, you know? I was thinking about snooker though recently. Is there like a is there like a gender split in snooker? I don't know. Can you name one female snooker player? No, I can't. But n nor can I name a female darts player. Ah. You know. And I'm just thinking like. And why is that? Because there's no. There's I no physical. Exactly. Like I can see why, like in you know, okay, football or boxing or whatever, it's obviously you know there's a gender split for a pretty pretty good reason, you know. Yeah. Um, but in snooker and darts. I was wondering, like, if there is a gender split, how do they justify it, you know? But that's one way they should really get rid of that, you know? I guess there's something in strength, like the strength with which you hit a ball. Nah, it doesn't, nah, surely not, you know? You're never using all of your strength, or anywhere near all of your strength, in a game like darts, you know? At no point are you fucking hurling the thing at the limit of your, you know? No, nor are you doing that in snooker, right? At no point you fucking smash it as hard as you can, like, no. 
Not that's, really. When I play something, that's sort of what I do. Yeah? Yeah, but... You Absolutely know, as high at the limit. You know, no, yeah, the ball yeah, would not fly the limit, off. Not at the limit. Not at the limit. I'm pretty weak, but yeah. Not at the limit, you know. I don't think anybody does it at the limit. So I think there's, a, there's something going on there, you know. There should be some kind of campaign or something. Yeah, you you've, know? you've given me an idea. I just think it's a weird one. I mean, I just think it's just, you know, everybody's kind of hit up on, on all that stuff these days. You know, I yeah. just don't understand why there hasn't been a kind of a snooker moment, you know? It's coming. Yeah. You could write about it. Maybe I will, you know? Maybe I will once I've really thought it through. Because... Take some time, you know? Really, you know, read around the subject, you know? <laughs> Make sure I'm not getting ahead of myself, you know? Not missing anything. You don't want to embarrass yourself these days because if you do, it's permanently logged online for you, all of eternity. Are you enjoying being a writer? Or writing more, I should say? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that uh, the more time you spend doing it, the, um, the more uh, intuitive it is, you know? Yeah. The problem is it's kind of like hard work focusing for so many hours at a stretch. And I think my world is kind of full of distractions you know like the whole music kind of carry on is obviously it's not a distraction but uh, it's difficult to go from one medium to the other well you have to sort of like de you have to sort of deflate your ego what when you write or when you when you write yeah if you're going up on stage and all that kind of carry on you know it's difficult to go back from that to sort of sit in quietly in a little room with a computer and just mulling over the same paragraph for like three hours. I have a terrible tendency to just mull the shit out of it, you know? Makes a good writer, probably. I don't know, I don't know, but if you read the same paragraph over and over again, you know? Well, this first, like this is what happens as I write three, two paragraphs, okay? And then I start to kind of like really fall for those two paragraphs, you know, and those two paragraphs, they become the thing that props up my whole kind of ego superstructure, you know? So I'll read them over and over again, but tell myself that that's how I'm gonna get the next one, you know, that it'll just come. But I end up incessantly rereading these paragraphs, you know? But if you reread something enough, it starts to kind of sit in your brain, almost like you've learned it by row. And then those rhythms are kind of like, they're sort of cast in like cerebral ledge, you know? And it's like, well, that's the way they've always been, you know? Mm. And then, like, if you need to fuck with the whole thing and change it, it becomes kind of, like, sacrilege or something, you know? Do you enjoy the process of being edited? Yeah, I think a good editor is kind of a... is kind of really... kind of an amazing thing to have. Because yeah, they'll just find, like, one... sometimes one little phrase and it just turns the whole thing, you know? Or an angle that's just completely... Because you've been fucking manically rereading two paragraphs, you've you've let it slip by, you know. Mm, and that must be a slightly different experience from writing a song, which obviously I guess if you're writing collaboratively with other people, like for you writing with your bandmates and stuff, I suppose you have that slight thing. But there's not the same hierarchy as I guess there is with an editor, like someone who's coming in that you trust to say, even yeah. though you think this is a brilliant sentence, I actually think this sentence would be much better in this way. And you say, all oh, right, yeah, you're right. With lyrics and stuff, I mean, I was often working collaboratively like that where I was writing to other people's melodies, you know? Right. So then you've only got like 15 syllables or whatever to play with, and they've got to fit the exact mood and timing and kind of, of the melody that's there, you know? Right. So I did that for ages, and it's really, constricting but it's also I think maybe quite helpful when you suddenly try and write like prose or whatever you know because you've got like uh, you know you can have as many syllables as you want you know but you've kind of schooled yourself in being efficient with them I guess or something yeah restrained restrained yeah you know yeah, yeah. Um, can you tell me a bit about the song about circumcision I was just sick of hearing that story out of my brother's garb you know so the story is your brother got circumcised when he was... Five. And that, that must be pretty big family law. Like, I can see why he would bang on about that. I mean, yeah, I can see why he's upset about it. For sure, you know? I mean, it's a weird thing to kind of have that uh, happen to you at the age of five, I guess, you know? And also, like, your penis, you know? Every time you look at your penis, there's this kind of, like... Uh, you know, so it's like triggering to look at your own genitalia, you know, mm. or something. Mm, mm. I guess that's uh, 
that's one element of it, you know, but he would really make such a song and dance about it, you know. If you get fucked up with my brother, it's like three in the morning or whatever. And he'll be telling this to strangers that he's just met, you know. So he's kind of vaguely proud of it, you know. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've appropriated it, yeah, I've taken it from him <laughs> and tried to, like, monetize it. Nice. Um, he got a... <laughs> He got a flight to Algeria and back out of it, you know. And he gets more, he gets more ears on his story. Well, he can just put this, he can just put it on now. In a way, it's a gift, you know. I've gifted him his own, his own narrative, you know what I mean? I packaged it for him and <laughs> delivered it to a free jazz kind of backing track. But I, I, I feel like it was kind of like a foundational thing where the band is concerned, you know. I think. Uh, what the, the circumcision? Yeah, I think that's where the kind of the weirdness sort of set in with the the family, you know. It's just deeply strange, and my big brother's kind of sense of humor, I think, was maybe a. I mean, he has an incredibly abstract kind of manner about him, you know, and he's incapable, pathologically incapable, of taking anything seriously. Uh, you know, if you tell him someone's just died five minutes later, he'd be making fucking jokes about it, you know. Right. I mean. I think that kind of whole sensibility somehow, maybe it's rooted in that bizarre kind of event up in the, yeah, the Atlas it. Mountains, you know, but I definitely kind of took after him in that regard, you know, uh, of just basically dealing with difficult situations by ripping the piss out of them, you know? I think it's a, a really good method of life, personally. I mean, you don't know my big brother. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think there's a, <laughs> I think there's a, there's, it, it, it can be, I think, you know, like a healthy dosage, like anything else, but there has to be a point, you know, where you kind of leave jokes aside, just everything cannot surely just be ridicule, you know? Oh, but I've lived by that, by that dictate pretty much my whole fucking adult life near enough. Although everything is kind of funny. Well, that's yeah. what I think. I think, and I, I think I'd prefer to be like that than what I think I am, which is like neurotic to the point of. Oh yeah, I'm like that as well. Yeah, to, the world is like constantly ending for me. Yeah, I have that real. You know, like people talk about seasonal affective disorder. Yeah. I think I have like just like evening. Yeah. Affective, like when the minute it gets dark, the sun starts going down. I start to like. I just fall prey to my anxieties, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. And then a lot of time by the evening, I'm just like depressed. And then in the morning, I'm like, ah, oh, it's all what right. What was that about? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, you know, these things I thought were problems are really just opportunities, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's been happening a lot recently, I guess. It's stressful kind of releasing things and the band's always kind of falling apart and it's just chaos, too much chaos, you know? <laughs> Do you think that, like, a reaction to that, you know, uh, evening dread or whatever, in part, is that responsible for partying a lot and getting fucked up and...? I think that's a lot, a lot to do with it, you know, because I've kind of been coming out of that. So what happens now in the absence of that for well, you? Well, like... I'm... I... In my domestic life, I've kind of had a grip on it for some time, yeah. where I'm kind of like, look, I choose my battles, you know what I mean? Every now and then I'll get kind of stashed up. Yeah. And that's been fine, you know, and I've been doing gigs with my other group, Decius, but it's always just one gig or two gigs, you know, so you can't get, you can't get that maligned, you know? But then I went on like a, an acoustic uh, tour that ended uh, a couple of weeks ago, you know, to promote the record. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been trying to like get in shape, trying to get like healthy and shit, you know, but one gig in, I completely fall off the wagon, you know? And then you're just getting like, uh, just like fucking blasted every night, you know? And it was awful, you know? And I ended up in that exact spot that I didn't want to end up, you know, where you're like, you're at like uh, at Edinburgh Weatherspoons at 8 a.m., like pouring like pints of Guinness down your throat, unable to like look at the other people you're with, you know? And I just kind of like, I just don't think I can do that anymore, you know? So how are you going to face the sort of upcoming tour? Because you, it's a Fat White Family tour coming up, right? It is a Fat White tour, yeah. Start in, uh, in Europe at the end of this month, running through next month. I don't know, I guess I'm going to try and do it with the... Thing is, I can't have like half measures. I thought I could. Mm. I thought I could have like a couple of drinks, a bit of mushrooms or something like that. But mm. the sad reality of the situation is that 
I can't, you know. Once the kind of post gig enthusiasm gets a grip here, all bets are off, you know. Right. Because you just feel like you're kind of untouchable or something. So, do you think you might do like a sober Glastonbury? I'm thinking, well, I did my first ever completely sober gig the other day with Decius, you know. Oh, yeah. And it was, it was great. I had a fucking good time. You know, I was like all smug. <laughs> you know, that's, a, that's, your, that's your dividend if you don't get fucked up. You can just walk around and be this completely smug prick, you know? This is how you become Alex James, man. If you've got no, like, funds, you can't get to that level of smugness, you know what I mean? You're walled off from it, you know? Yes. This is you just, can't become pious. You can't, be, well, no, you can become pious, but you just can't live on a farm and start a cheese factory, you know? Like, you're always just kind of down in the trenches with the fucking... There is no... There's no exit, you know? Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah, yeah. it's just kind of... Everybody I know in, in, in music plays in like three bands, works other jobs on the side. You know, they're yeah. all just fucking like grafting, you know? Yeah. And that's shitty, but it's also kind of keeps you, so like protects you from ever getting into like cheese factory country, you know? It's totally. You're shielded from, from that level of pomposity, you know? That's, that's not an option anymore. Have I done a good job here? It looks to me like you have. You reckon? I think you look like you've done a, a wonderful job. I think job. it looks pretty good. I, I, I'd happily plant myself in that soil. <laughs> okay, well, what about these butternut squash? Let's get the squash in there. I'm going to give you this. Just dig a big hole. So dig it like... How big are we talking? Like the width and depth of the spade panel. The width and depth of the spade? Okay, so kind of an, an intricate... Big square. And the other, the, the mud, the... the the mud that comes up, the dirt that comes up. Just put it in front of it, we don't need it anymore. Because okay. we're going to fill it with compost. Okay. We're going to fill it with... It's quite therapeutic, actually, I think. <gasps> really? Yeah, I like it. I could, I could get into a bit of gardening, you know, I think. Do you have any sort of, uh, like, physical activities that you do? Not, like, exercise, I don't know. I go... Or... I've started going boxing. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, i started going boxing occasionally, you know? Which I find, like, I always found, like, a physical kind of violence something I always shied away from at school. Mm -hmm. You know, to my detriment sometimes maybe, I don't know. I kind of just took the kind of bullying on the chin and went into myself, you know, as my brothers are both scrappers, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I thought it'd be good to kind of get, get a taste for physical, physical violence, you know. So was at school, did you get beaten up a lot? I mean, not like a lot, but I had like that kind of thing where you know, I had like a weird second name and a big conk and was from out of town. You know, this was in like Northern Ireland, you know, mm. where, you know, fucking Protestants don't get, get on with Catholics. You know what I mean? If you're like got an Arab second name, it's like... Game over. Not game over. I mean, it wasn't so bad that I was kind of like, you know, in a way I'm grateful I didn't have any friends because it was kind of like... I don't know, I could kind of like just read books and listen to music or whatever. I didn't want any friends, you know. I was quite struck by that when I read the book, that mm. when you're talking about a, f a friendless youth. Yeah. But that it did open up a lot of time for what would then become your, like, I, I guess your passions, like art and literature and music. Yeah, exactly. I don't think I found that time again until, until the pandemic, you know. Yeah. Because I just moved to London, was sort of scared of people and women and yeah. it was just sort of like well I'll just sort of do like loads of drink and drugs and that just went on and on and on and on yeah that hole's perfect can you do okay. the same same thing same thing here yeah here, here. yeah same thing there but so and that must have changed for you now uh, yeah I think I think the I think the pandemic helped you know it was a bit like it didn't help it just sort of reset things you know yeah where it was like I don't know, I found myself close to the person I'd been when I was, uh, you know, before I'd come to London, you know, which is basically just a fucking nerd. Do you remember a book or a piece of music or something that you listened to at that kind of pivotal age? All of it, you know? Yeah. All of it, like, especially like the heavyweights. In Northern Ireland, there was no, like, alternative scene in small, in, like, Cookstown, you know? Yeah. It's not like there were other kids into, like, indie music, you know? Yeah. So, like... It was more like the big hitters, you know, so like Bob Dylan or Leonard Cohen or, you know, Jimi Hendrix or something, you know, or the Forrest Gump soundtrack. I don't think I can recall the Forrest Gump soundtrack. Forrest Gump soundtrack, man. I remember that being like, I remember that being great when I was like 14. It's like the film. It's just a kind of panoramic view of like American 
bands. I remember when I was really young reading uh, Oscar Wilde. In school, they used to have like a, a like a cart that goes around with um, books, and you pick a book, you know. And, and everybody was reading those fucking like goosebumps things or whatever. But even at the age of like 14 or whatever, I was quite quite pompous. And there was this Oscar Wilde <laughs> book, and it was called The Importance of Being Earnest, which straight away I was a kind of like fuck is that about you know and there was a kind of art deco picture of like a guy in a top hat smelling a rose and I was like what's that about like do you know what I mean mm. that's not like goosebumps or Harry Potter wasn't a thing yet but you know what I mean mm. what are you reading at the moment I just finished reading Gwendolyn Riley my phantoms do you ever read Gwendolyn Riley oh the name is familiar yeah she's fucking wicked She's really good. It's just about, I guess, it, I, mean, I get the impression it's vaguely autobiographical, but it's written like a short fiction, you know? Yeah. But it's just about a relationship with her, her mum especially, but it's incredibly, like, sad, but, like, realised in a kind of visceral way, you know, where you mm. really kind of like, you know, that kind of, like, horror of kind of, like, intimacy, you know? Mm. Yeah, it's really good. I highly recommend that. Is that deep enough? Your hole is looking fantastic, so now it would be good if you fill it in. Fill it in? Yeah, this... Okay. Are you okay with... With dirt? Yeah. Of course. Yeah, I feel like you've experienced... I've experienced dirt. Yeah. I have, you know, I, yeah. I, can't, I can't lie. It's, it's, it feels... Oh, sorry. Yeah, it feels mad to ask you, like, are you okay with getting your hands dirty when... Yeah, no, I've no. I've read books about, like, dead birds and shit in the house. Yeah, yeah, my, my brother's pet duck carcass, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good old, good old days. Um, so yeah, basically what we're doing now is just filling in these holes with compost. The young plants just need a bit more, a bit more juice in okay. the earth to get it going. Ah, okay. So that's why we do this. We're so gonna this fill is it up. Nutrient-rich dirt. Exactly. This is like superior dirt. Okay. This is Alex Jones dirt. Right, Alex Jones or Alex oh, James? Oh, sorry, Alex James. Freudian slip. Okay. <laughs> 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 See how that is specially flown in from Alex Jones. <laughs> in full wars dirt. Fertilised by the gay frogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right wing dirt. That's fantastic. Nice and That's full. about right? Yeah, okay. that's looking great. And then, um, you do that one, I'll do this one. Here's Dude. our baby plants. Okay. A butternut squash that we hate. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to squeeze this out. One for you and one for me. Get you. Ah, it's like a... It's like a silver road. <laughs> it doesn't like a silver <laughs> 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 Okay, there's one for you. Okay. Oops, don't kill the roots. There you go. And then dig yeah. a little hole with this thing. Okay, you want to... Yeah, and you're going to put it all in. See what all I mean? All in. Yeah, like you want to plant the... Plant the baby plant with as much of the soil that it kind of came in yeah. to give it a bit of a go. So you just like make a little hole in the compost that we've made, pop it in. And then that's when this dirt comes back into play and we'll just fill it back in. Add a bit of this earth around the right. side. Okay. Yeah, just He's not like... in too deep, is he? No, it's good. Don't bury any more of, of this, of the, the stalk. stalk, but fill this so that the ground's kind of level, but it is quite good if he's in a bit of a... A little bit of a dip. Yeah, because then when we water it, um, the water will stay rather than like running off the side, if you see what I mean. You don't want him to drown though, do you? The, the, the fact you're personifying the plant makes me feel like you're having a good time. I am, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I, you know, actually the, I'm moving into a new, a new flat in September. I think we have like a tiny, Tiny, You've got a bit of space. A little bit of space at the back. Actually, there's a bit of space at the front as well. Who knows, you know? My, my girlfriend likes to kind of garden. She used to do that when she lived in Spain. You know, I, I get that kind of wrapped up in my neuroses, though. You know, it's like cooking, you know? Like, I'm sure I could cook if I just put my mind to it, but I just can't bring myself. I think gardening's much easier. Yeah? Yeah, you can't really fuck it up. You put it in the ground, hopefully it works. Whereas, like, cooking, if you make a bad meal, you have to eat it. It feels so wasteful. It's quite yeah. embarrassing. It's, it's just a bit of a, it's a humbling experience in the way that... Yeah, when you spend the same money, you could have spent having a nice Thai meal on like something that you botch. Exactly, and you, then you made so much of it that you have to put it in the freezer and like all of this kind of thing and it's horrible and you eat it in the future. Yeah. Yeah, whereas I, gardening is, it's, I think it's lower stakes. It's lower stakes. Yeah. So well, it's life and death though. 
It's like a, it's like a child there. We've planted a child in the soil, you know? I think I have to not think too much about that. Yeah. I have to guard against my sentimentality because I can be very, you know, get upset about look things. Look how vulnerable. Really... Oh, don't. How vulnerable. Like, look, this one's got a little bit of a damaged leaf, look. I know, and I don't know what to do about it. So. It's just going to be out here all night on its own. Maybe you shouldn't garden. You know? <laughs> you seem, you seem sentimental be, as well. <laughs> it's just going to be sat here all night. There's foxes, there's badgers, you know, there's fucking seagulls and... It's going to be pigeons, all right. you know, it's just sitting there with one bust up leaf and two decent leaves shrouded in muck just in the night, you know? Fucking and how long does it take for it? How long does it take for it to become, you know, a kind of... Uh, Hardy. Yeah, yeah, for to be kind of taken out and, and put into the digestive system. Ages. How long's that? Like three months. It's going to be just out here. That's quicker than I thought, three months. Really? Yeah, can you only grow them this time of year though, right? Um, no, you can put them in any time from, any time after like the frost really. So from okay. about a week ago, from, from early May through the summer. But this is a good time. It will, basically it will, it will grow big like this, the plant, and it, it really sprawls out and then the butternut squash grow like along the floor like this and then you only get a few. It sits out on the floor? Yeah, it sits out on the floor. Like a watermelon? Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit, um, what's the word, it's a bit gaudy. Like, it's a bit like, here I am. Right, you know? gaudy, yeah. So, I, that, that's why maybe I don't feel too sentimental about the butternut squash, because I know what it's going to become. Because they're hussies. A little bit of a flag. Right. <laughs> Whereas there's other plants that I feel a bit more, I guess, protective over. What, like a... Uh, I don't know, hit me. A broad bean. A broad bean. A broad bean. A broad bean, they're so vulnerable. Yeah. They yeah. can get so many things. I'm also going to put a bit of borage seeds around this. Sometimes I look at my Instagram reels yeah, and yeah, yeah. they're all just people who really seem like they know what they're doing, like yeah. shouting into the camera about things that you should do. And one of them is a companion plant for squash and squash family is borage seeds and radishes and beetroot and stuff like that. So I'm going to put some borage. Like a healthy kind of an Instagram reel, you know? I wish mine was something as constructive as that. What's yours? I mean, I'd rather not say. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. You know. Oh yes, we need to water these in now. It's the it's the water final part. In. Yeah, you just pour a bit of water on them. Okay. I'll bring you the watering can. And you can do the honors. Okay. And uh, don't get the leaves wet. Don't get the leaves wet. Yeah. So just pour it. Yeah, exactly into the. It's okay if it splashes a bit. So just the surrounding environment. Yeah. And how much are we talking? Quite a lot. When you put in a new plant anywhere, you want to water it in a lot. Helps the roots. Ooh. All right. Oops. Oh, Shit. Oh, God. That's your little, you know, your protégé. <laughs> um, is that enough water, do you think? Put a bit more on. You, you can't overwater it. You can't overwater nah. it? Oh, right, OK. No, 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 it's fine. If it was in a pot, Thirst. you could overwater it. So thirsty, oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but it's hot today as well, so it needs quite a lot. And then this one? It's a thirsty, Please? it's a thirsty boy. This one? And then, we're pretty much done. Wow. What did you think? I thoroughly enjoyed that, actually. Yeah. I th I, at first I thought, oh no, but now you're a convert. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. You've had a meaningful experience on the allotment. I, I have, yeah. You know. <laughs> I honestly have. It's been, uh, it's been a pleasure. Well, thank you very much for coming. Yeah, no. I guess we should shake 30 hands. <laughs> <laughs> Done?